know, it's always tragic when we lose somebody, but I've probably been able to witness more of my bus ride the last Thursday or Friday after uh, I went back. They have a long time. Everybody comes up and says, you know, sorry. And I just tell them, I'm, I just hope I'm as ready to go as my mom was when she went. Amen. If there's no other testimonies, then I'll turn the service over to Brother Wayne. Well, hold on a minute. Clint, if you read First Chronicles, the 16th chapter. Verse 27, verse. The 27th chapter? The what? What chapter? So they brought the ark of God and set it in the midst of the tent that David had pitched for it. And they offered burnt sacrifices and peace offerings before God. And when David had made an end of offering the burnt offerings and the peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord. And he dealt to every one of Israel, both man and woman, to every one a loaf of bread and a good piece of flesh and a flagon of wine. And he appointed certain of the Levites to minister before the ark of the Lord and to record and to thank and praise the Lord God of Israel. Asaph the chief, and next to him Zechariah, Jael, Shimarapmoth, and Jehiel, and Mattathiah, and Eliab, and Benahi, and Obadidim, and Jael with psalteries and with harps. But Asaph made a sound with cymbals. Benaiah also, and Jehaziel the priest with trumpets, continually before the ark of the covenant of God. Then on that day David declared, First, this psalm to thank the Lord into the hand of Asaph and his brethren. Give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him, sing psalms unto him. Talk ye, all, talk ye of all his wondrous works. Glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his face, face continually. Remember his marvelous works that he hath done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O ye seed of Israel, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen ones. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. Be ye mindful always of his covenant the word which he commanded to a thousand generations, even of the covenant which he made with Abraham, and of his oath unto Isaac, and hath confirmed the same to Jacob for a law, and to Israel for an everlasting covenant, saying unto thee will I give the land of Canaan, the lot of your inheritance, when ye were but few, even a few, and strangers in it. And when they went from nation to nation, and from one kingdom to another people, he suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sakes, saying, Touch not mine anointed, and do my prophets no harm. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Show forth from day to day his salvation. Declare his glory among the heathen, his marvelous works among all nations. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He also is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the people are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Glory and honor are in his presence. Strength and gladness are in his place. Thank you, Cliff. Steve, if you'll read the fifth chapter of Second Chronicles. Yeah, that's the Hebrew people under the law from sun up till sundown read the Pentateuch, 
first five books of the Bible, we have it easy. If we read one or two scriptures, we say, God, I've done you a great service. They read the fifth chapter. Second Chronicles, fifth chapter. Thus, all the work that Solomon made for the house of the Lord was finished. And Solomon brought in all the things that David his father had dedicated, and the silver, and the gold, and all the instruments put he among the treasures of the house of God. Then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel, and all the heads of the tribes, the chief of the fathers of the children of Israel unto Jerusalem, to bring up the ark of the covenant <coughs> of the Lord out of the city of David, which is Zion. Wherefore all the men of Israel assembled themselves unto the king in the feast which was in the seventh month. And all the elders of Israel came, and the Levites took up the ark. And they brought up the ark and the tabernacle and the congregation and all the holy vessels that were in the tabernacle. These did the priest and the Levites bring up. Also King Solomon and all the congregation of Israel that were assembled unto him before the ark sacrificed sheep and oxen which could not be told nor numbered for multitude. And the priest brought in the ark of the covenant of the Lord unto his place, to the oracle of the house, and to the most holy place, even under the wings of the cherubims. For the cherubim spread forth their wings over the place of the ark, and the cherubims covered the ark and the staves thereof above. And they drew out the staves of the ark, and the ends of the staves were seen from the ark before the oracle, but they were not seen without. And there it, there it is unto this day. There was nothing in the ark save the two tablets which Moses put therein, that Herod, when the Lord made a covenant with the children of Israel when they came out of Egypt. And it came to pass when the priests were come out of the holy place for all the priests that were present were sanctified and did not then wait by course. Also the Levites, which were the singers, all of them of Asaph, of Heman, of Jedatham, with their sons and their brethren being arrayed in white linen, having cymbals and palstries and harps stood at the east end of the altar and with them a hundred and twenty priests sounding with trumpets. It came even to pass as the trumpets and singers were as one to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voices with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praised the Lord saying, for he is good for his mercy endureth forever. And then the house was filled with a cloud, even the house of the Lord, so that the priest could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God. Thank you, Steve. Israel was totally consumed by their fellowship with God. We just sang a song that said, I surrender all. That makes most religious people a liar. I wish I could surrender all. I attempt to surrender all. The Jews, they were raised from infancy to old age to repeat to memorize and to understand what it meant to go through the feast, especially the feast of Thanksgiving. Now, I think next Thursday we celebrate Thanksgiving. Everybody's moaning and groaning because they can't have 40 people at the house. My wife, she's all pushed out of shape. They said that this Thanksgiving, I'm talking about Fosse, I call him Fosse, the most notable one that's trying to get us out of this darkness that we're in. 
then that we can sacrifice one holiday to protect our loved ones and protect the people around about us until we can get through this trying time, Thanksgiving. But we feel like we're being robbed of something. But like Steve said last Sunday morning, Thanksgiving comes from the heart. Third John, the second chapter. We're going to try to talk about Thanksgiving. We'll talk about the riches of God and what God intended for man to have and why man has surrendered it by simple disobedience to the Word of God. And whenever they read the two chapters of Chronicles, it's talking about the temple of God, the ark of God, and the service to God. I would you like to spend all day from sunup to sundown listening to priests one after another reading the word of God? Well, it'd be tremendous if the temple was filled with the Spirit whenever we got through with our services. Then what John said in John the, well, it's just third John and, and uh, the second verse. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in hell, even as thy soul prospers. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in hell, even as thy soul prospers. Evangelical world for the last several years has put its emphasis on being rich, if you give a dollar, God will give you back ten. If you give ten, God will give you a hundred. And, and so many false prophets on television tell you if you want a real good bonus, you give sixty dollars. And if you want an extra, you just give ninety dollars. <coughs> Those are false prophets. God wants us to be prosperous and in health. But the balance there is, as thy soul prospers. In other words, our health and our prosperity depends on how our soul prospers. And our soul is that experience that we have between God and our human nature. God breathed into man his breath, and man became a living soul. And the soul that sent us shall surely die. Now we in America have got tremendous problems today. As a matter of fact, we've got problems all over the world. But whenever we look at what the scripture declares, God wants us to be in health. And he wants us to prosper as our soul prospers. Our experience with God, our relationship with God. John the 10th chapter and the 10th verse. John the 10th chapter and the 10th verse. The thief, I'm having a little problem this morning, so bear with me. The thief cometh not, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. The devil tells you, if you'll disobey God, if you'll go and live, and wantless life and 
a worldly life that you can have all this joy and all this pleasure. America is eaten up because the thief came. And he cometh to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. That they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. The Greek term for abundantly is filled up and running over. Most people are not enjoying their life. According to statistics, they're depressed. They're destroying their life with drugs, with alcohol. So whenever you tell them they're going to have an abundance of what they've already got, I don't want an abundance of what the thief brings. I want an abundance of what God gives us. As your soul prospers, then we can prosper and be in hell. The third chapter of the book of Genesis talks about how God created man. We're a complex machine. <clears throat> Our brain supersedes any computer that will ever be manufactured. I was telling one of my grandsons, Devin, that we don't use all our brains. The majority of us use two or three percent of the ability of our brain. It's on the average about five percent. Einstein used about 10%. I don't know how much Solomon used, but the Bible talks about he was the wisest man around at that time. But whenever we look at what the scripture declares, God created man in his image, breathed into him his spirit, And Adam and Eve, you know the story, you've known it since you were young. How did he create Adam out of mud? And created Eve out of a bone out of Adam's body. So the woman was brought out of man. And there, whenever they looked around and saw everything, of course they were just introduced to it. They looked and saw all of the abundance of the Garden of Eden. And God said, Adam and Eve, you can have everything here. It's all yours. You don't have to want for anything. It is here for your pleasure and for your enjoyment. See, God's not against our pleasure. He's not against us having pleasure. He's against us having the pleasure that the thief brings. The thief brings that which kills and destroys. God gives us that for our pleasure. Listen to what it said that God created man in his image, in his likeness, breathed into him the breath of life. And man became a living soul. And God said, now wait a minute, Adam and Eve, there's one tree here I want you to stay away from. It's a tree of life. Don't eat of it, leave it alone. You got all of this other that you can have. The thief came to Eve and said, you know, the Lord 
knows that if you eat of that, you're going to be like him. And he's just jealous, don't want you to be like him. Now, Eve, you ought to try this fruit because it is sumptuous, it's good, and gives you pleasure. Well, Satan was convincing. How many times Satan has convinced me about different things? Are you about different things? Yes. If you listen to her, you're going to wind up in trouble. Because he's a liar. And he's the father of lies. And Jesus is the truth. So Eve told Adam when they came, Oh, you you got to try this fruit. They normally call it an apple off the tree. I don't know what it was. Some preach it was metaphorically. But there was a tree in the garden that God said stay away from. See, God created us and gave us the most valuable thing that we can possess. Freedom of will. Free will, free choice. Now we, we can give up that free choice because the devil will steal it and rob us of free choice. And whenever Eve made a choice to disobey God. She became a slave to sin. Guilt and condemnation. It eats us up. Yes. We do something wrong, we, we try to hide it, try to put it down in, but it eats us up. He said, well, i got to share this with Adam. So Adam said, just, just partake of it. it. It's glorious and good. And Adam partook of it. And then he heard a voice. The voice cried out and said, Adam, where are you? Adam knew where, I mean, God knew where Adam was at. But Adam and Eve made them fig leaves to cover their nakedness and tried to hide from God. That's something we can't do is hide from God. So the devil stole from Adam and Eve in the garden stole their innocence, 